Hey there everyone, Hitesh here back again with another video and uh, welcome to another video in the TypeScript series. Now I'm a firm believer that if you show people the code and try to explain the concept within the code and the execution of the code, it's much easier to explain. I've tried it out, tested it out with over a million students and it works nicely. The another consequence is that if you don't try to write the code and instead you just use uh, the pen and pencil which is a great way of learning but it takes much more time. It requires, let's just say, a 40 minute videos or a one hour 40 minute video. But what I've noticed is take people directly on the code. Try to write the code, execute the code and explain the concept just right there. It brings a more functionality uh, to the teaching pedagogy as well as it's much more easier to understand. And that's exactly what we'll be following in this entire series. Instead of just putting you all in the theory of pen and pencil, which is a good way, good way again of teaching the stuff, but I'm a firm believer of taking you onto the code editor as quickly as possible. Let's go ahead and work with that. So in this video, I'll walk you through that how you can install TypeScript on your system and there are a couple of ways how you do it. Now the way how we are going to start with the TypeScript and the way how we use it in the projects are two different uh, installation of the TypeScript. The first one is a global system install that we are going to use. This will be helpful for you to understand the concepts of TypeScript. But when you're going to use TypeScript in your project, maybe React project or Angular project, there an additional TypeScript config file is required so that you can address what kind of settings you want, what kind of things you don't want. So there will be a two different installation. First of all, we're going to focus just on the core system wide installation so that you can create basic files, understand what is the new thing in the TypeScript, how you can understand it. And then we are going to later on move into the project section where we are going to see how we can config the TypeScript settings so that it can help us to produce a better code. I hope that is all clear. For this, now let me take you onto my computer screen and walk you through with that. The first thing that we're going to do is obviously create a new folder and we're going to call this one as simply, uh, simply, let's just call this one as TypeScript and uh, why not TypeScript YouTube because that's what we are doing up here. Okay, so TypeScript YouTube is here. Inside this also, I would like to create a new folder and let's call this one as 01. Uh, this is getting intro, so let's call this one as 01 intro. So this is the folder where we're going to do everything up here. Now, before that, uh, we need to install TypeScript. So uh, installation of the TypeScript is pretty super straightforward. Now, let me walk you through with that. All you have to do is first open up your terminal. And by the way, all these instructions are also mentioned on the TypeScript website. We are going to study that in a minute. Let me open that up. Uh, just give me a second. So let me go ahead and open up the TypeScript. So here it is. Okay, so here it is, the TypeScript website officially and all the things are available here. And we can see that this is online via NPM. There are lots of ways how you can actually go ahead and install that. Uh, let's go on to the download section and here it says that, hey, you can install the TypeScript by saying NPM install TypeScript. Uh, this is a way, but we won't be using this one. Rather, we'll be actually installing it globally so that we can use it wherever we like. Once we are done with that uh, global installation, we have understood the basic concept, then in the project, we'll be using the same. NPM install TypeScript as a dev. I told you, this is a development tool. That's why it's usually installed as a dev dependency. So things will make much more sense as we move forward. So you get that, it's pretty easy and same. And again, it's exactly same for Mac, Windows, Linux, whatever the system you are using. In case you are on Windows, I highly recommend to use Git Bash, uh, which is way better shell uh, or use PowerShell. So there's a shell available known as git bash. For Windows, I highly recommend people to use this shell. It gives you the same command that I'm using, like CD, LS, and all Linux friendly commands. Again, nothing much to do, uh, nothing a hard and fast requirement. Now, the very first thing that we need is node. So make sure there is a node installed in your system. If you just say node-v, it should pop up some number. It doesn't really mean that exact same number should come up to you. Any number is fine. If it is giving us an error, then go ahead on to node website and install node. Pretty simple. Next, next, I agree, click OK, all those kind of stuff should be OK. Node also gives us a utility of NPM and we can check out what version of NPM node package manager is given to us and we have to install that as well. Once we're done with this, then we have to simply go ahead and install the TypeScript. And for installation, it's pretty simple. NPM install and we're going to install TypeScript. That's all what we need. Now this is what we need, but we want to install it globally so that we can use wherever and anywhere we like throughout the system and that is why the dash G flag works. Now this is going to work absolutely fine. In case you are on Windows, make sure you right click and open up your git bash as an administrator. In case you are on Linux or Mac, make sure you append this with sudo. In some cases it is required. 
As soon as you hit sudo, you need to enter a password and that's it. Let's go ahead and do this. This is going to ask a password. That's it. And mine is already installed, so it didn't took much time, but this is all what we got. So now TypeScript is available in our system. And if I just open up uh, this one here, this actually gives us a unique command, which is TSC, TypeScript. Now, there are a couple of other ways of installing it with Node, Node Package Executor and a whole bunch of other things. But the focus here is that it gives us an access to the command, which is TSC. This is the hole which is going to allow us to install, not install, but actually execute the TypeScript file. So I can go ahead and say TSC and I can hit a dash V to find out the version of it. As long as it gives me any number of version, that is totally fine. Throughout this course, we'll be focusing on the core foundation and fundamental of TypeScript. So any version beyond this or even this version is absolutely fine. In case you're using any previous version, that is also absolutely fine. Nothing should be worried. These are core foundation. These are the things which never change in the language itself. All right, uh, pretty basic installation, but I have explained each line by line. I hope you appreciate that. If you appreciate that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I have noticed that 70% of my audience doesn't do a subscribe button. So go ahead and please hit that out. Okay, now this is all done. So we have a new uh, folder up here. Let's go ahead and fire up a VS Code as well. So we're gonna go ahead and say VS Code, Visual Studio Code. Uh, should be taking just a minute to get started. And this is what we have. This is a previous iOS dev uh, version that is already installed. So we're gonna just remove this, get started with the intro, and there we go. Yes, of course I trust this, <laughs> okay. Now in this intro, all we're gonna do is write the very basic hello world, but in TypeScript, we'll be able to compile that into JavaScript so that we can see how that works. So we're gonna go ahead and call this one as intro.ts, and again, make sure you write this as ts. You can also write it tsx, but that's for a component level thing, uh, when we want to use or install JSX, execute JSX in the same file. If you didn't understand that, that's totally okay. Make sure you write .ts, which is an extension of TypeScript. Now, VS Code will try to give you a .ts automatically as a TypeScript. In case you don't have that, go ahead and install some packages for icons and stuff. Pretty, there are a plethora of icons available. You can go ahead and look for icons, material icon to whatnot, everything is available. Now, all right. Now let's go ahead and see that how we can actually write some of the code and convert them into JavaScript. So the classic, uh, let's go ahead and do a console log and let's go ahead and write name. Uh, make sure you write your name, that would be a fantastic one. This is a classic code of JavaScript that has nothing to do with, uh, with the TypeScript at all. Let's go ahead and create a couple of variables. So we're gonna go ahead and say, uh, let's call this one as number or let's go ahead and have a user. So same example that we have talked through previously. And let's go ahead and say that this is going to have a name. Let's say this is my name and an age that is going to be 10, pretty good. And let's just say what more. Uh, we have uh, email, well, let's just not put email. Let's just have this much only. And further down the road, we also want to have a console log of something. So let's go ahead and remove this one and say we want to print out user.name. Now this is a classic JavaScript, nothing to do, classic TypeScript, nothing to do with JavaScript. But this thing, whole thing cannot be executed at all in the TypeScript format. If you put this into production or any application, it's not going to work. This is where your installation of TSX or the TypeScript comes into the picture. So what you can do is you can simply say TS, uh, TSC TypeScript. And once we have this TypeScript, then all we gotta do is name the file. In this case, intro.ts. As soon as I hit this enter, notice this has automatically created an intro.js for me. And the code is exactly same. Yes, the spaces were removed and it tries to align it. This is all what TypeScript does. It converts your TypeScript into JavaScript, no matter what project you are using, this is the exact implementation of it. Now the only advantage is, as I told you, right now it's giving us a squiggly line that it says cannot redeclare the block scope variable and all of that. So that's the basic, we'll go through with the uh, more detail that it should be a let or it should be a const, whatever it should be, why is it giving us errors and hold those details, we'll study about that in depth. The only advantage that we get is if I go ahead and do an email, it gives me again squiggly line that property email does not exist on type. So the whole idea behind TypeScript is it saves me from some errors, which I will eventually fall into uh, if I'm writing just code JavaScript. And again, 
I told you one more time, this is just a dev tool. This is a development tool, a wrapper around JavaScript to make your life easier and safer. Now again, there is nothing which is uh, stopping me to execute this code. If I go ahead and run this file again, this command again, notice it gives me an error, but still the code works. It says user.email. So yes, there will be errors, uh, but these errors doesn't stop you uh, from producing your JavaScript as well. Again, there are a lot of settings uh, for that as well. So again, you get the idea how this is being done. One more thing I would like to mention here is onto the playground. So if I go ahead and click on the playground on the TypeScript website, you will notice that there is a tab which says settings. Now in the settings, you can see there is a lot of settings that are available for you. And on top of that, there is a TS config. This is the configuration file that we make while creating a React project or another project. In this, there are a lot of options that you want to include JSX or maybe you want to include the ES Next module. Uh, what is your target? Uh, maybe ES 2017, 2019, ES Next, whatever your target. There's a lot of declaration, a lot of output formatting, how you want to make your code prettify. Uh, do you want to have an error, not error, strict checking and all of that? Yes, we will understand them uh, when we'll be creating our TS config file for the project. But I just wanted to give a brief overview that it does exist and you can see a lot of example. One thing that I forgot to mention in the last video is uh, the same thing that a lot of people believe that with the TypeScript you, you write less line of code and you can just click on example and let's just say you want to have an example of built-in utility types and you can see that these are so much of the line of code but ultimately it generates only this much of line of code. If you remove the comments you can see this is the only code that we were able to generate in JavaScript uh, and we are writing so much in TypeScript. So yes, this is the case. We write a lot more code in TypeScript, but it's a safer code. Uh, quite a lot, quite a lot in just one video. So that's it for this video. Let's catch up in the next one and try to get one by one the details and the nitty gritty of the TypeScript. Let's catch up in the next video. Hit that subscribe.